When will the second coming be? When will the close of probation be? Let us discuss from the book, Last Day Events of Ellen G. White State. This is chapter 3. When shall these things be? The disciples asked Christ about his return. Christ's words had been uh, the blue is uh, from E.G. White State, but the black one is from Ellen G. White herself. Christ's words, Matthew 24, 2, had been spoken in the hearing of a large number of people. But when he was alone, Peter, John, James, and Andrew came to him as he sat upon the Mount of Olives. Tell us, they said, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and the end of the world? Jesus did not answer his disciples by taking up separately the destruction of Jerusalem and the great day of his coming. He mingled the description of these two events. He had op had he opened to his disciples future events as he beheld them, they would have been unable to endure the sight. In mercy to them, he blended the description of the two great crises, leaving the disciples to study out the meaning for themselves. Desire of Ages, page 628-1898. So, let us look at the time of Christ's return not being known. Many who have called themselves Adventists have become time setters. Time after time has been set for Christ to come, but repeated failures have been the result. The definite time of our Lord's coming is declared to be beyond the ken of mortals. Even the angels who minister unto the, those who shall be heirs of salvation know not the hour, uh, know not the hour, but of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels in heaven, but my Father only. Who is speaking? It is Jesus. Testimonies for the Church 4, uh, Volume 4, page 307, 1879. We are not to know the definite time, either for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit or for the coming of Christ. Why has not God given us this knowledge? Because we would not make a right use of it if he did. A condition of things would result from this knowledge among our people that would greatly retard the work of God in preparing a people to stand in the great day that is to come. We are not to live upon time excitement. Yeah, should be always ready. You will not be able to say that he will come in one, two, or five years. Neither are you to put off his coming by stating that it may not be for 10 or 20 years. So if you put number too low, <clears throat> we cannot do it. If you put number too big, then we are just not preparing. Yeah? We cannot say, okay, you will not be able to say. We are nearing the great day of God. The signs are fulfilling, and yet we have no message. We have no message to tell us of the day and hour of Christ's appearing. The Lord has wisely concealed this from us, that we may always be in a state of expectancy and preparation for the second appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ in the clouds of heaven. The exact time of the second coming of the Son of Man is God's mystery. Desire of Ages 633. Ours is not a time setting message. We are not that uh, we are not of that class who define the exact period of time that shall elapse before the coming of Jesus Christ the second time with power and great glory. Some have set a time, and when that time has passed, their presumptuous spirits, you know, you think, we think that we are serving God, but Jesus doesn't want to tell 
the exact time. He said his father only knows. There are presumptuous spirits. That's why it's presumption because it is not God's message, but we think it is God's message. Have not, we are contradicting the prophets. Their presumptuous spirits have not accepted rebuke. And then we cannot be corrected because we are smarter than Ellen G. White and uh, the Bible. But they have set another and another time. But okay. Then we will know, the Bible says, if it happens, then you believe the prophet. If it doesn't happen, then you don't fear him because he is not from God. But many successive failures have stamped them as false prophets. So if, but there is always a way to repent. When we put a date and then it will not happen, then there is the stamp of a false prophet. According to Fundamentals of Christian Education 335, God gives no man a message that it will be 5 years or 10 years or 20 years before this earth's history shall close. So, the prophet says there will be no message like that. Uh, so, we know that we have to be careful about ideas that are presenting to be like that because the prophet that we believe says there will God will not give a message like that. And Jesus himself doesn't contradict the prophets. I come not to destroy the law and the prophets, but to fulfill. He would not give any living being an excuse for delaying the preparation for his appearing. So we should prepare. He would have no one say, as did the unfaithful servant, my Lord delayeth his coming. For this leads to reckless neglect of the opportunities and privileges given to prepare for that great day. So one side wants to delay and another side is too excited. In the middle, not in the middle, there is a path, the narrow way. Okay, Review and Herald, November 27, 1900. What is the problem with time setting? Time setting leads to unbelief. Because the times repeatedly set have passed, the world is in a more decided state of unbelief than before in regard, there is, in regard to the near advent of Christ. There will become uh, desensitized. They look upon the failures of the time setters with disgust. And because men have, so now it's eroding the, the credibility of prophecy when we mix truth and not truth, truth and presumption. And because men have been so deceived, many people are so, uh, they have good intention. But it is not according to what is written. Because men have been so deceived to turn from the truth, substantiated by the word. You see, substantiated. It has to be according to the Bible, not conflicting. And the interpretation should be also affirmed by spirit of prophecy. Because they have both, uh, they have the same source. When we contradict, Jesus said, no one knows, only my father, only, eh? you know what only means? Only my father in heaven. Ellen Dwight says, there, it is not from God. That message, that idea is not from God. So how can we say that Jesus only doesn't really mean only? Yeah, let me see. Let me go back if Jesus really said only. I saw it here a while ago. Jesus said, Only. But my father, only. Who is saying this? 
this Jesus Christ. So Jesus is saying, only God the Father knows. Okay, I hope, I don't know what only means to you, my friends, but only means only. Okay. And Ellen White says, it is really only. Okay. Let's continue. Presumptuous spirit. That's why Ellen White calls it presumptuous spirits. And some people don't like to accept rebuke because they think they are smarter than Ellen White and Jesus. Therefore, they will... It is... Uh, be stamped as false prophets. Okay. So, because time setting, they erode the credibility of prophecy and their own selves. They look upon these failures with disgust, and because men have been so deceived, they turn from truth substantiated by the word of God, that the end of all things is at hand. <clears throat> so, we need substance, quality of reference, not this guy and this guy. We have to base it from the Bible, not on the internet. And it should not contradict with the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. I understand that Brother E. P. Daniels has, as it were, set time, stating that the Lord will come within five years. Now I hope the impression will not go abroad that we are time setters. That's why I am making this video, my friends, to be clear. Even if some of my friends say there is a date. I want to be clear, I don't believe them, and we should not believe them, I mean, you should not believe. Because the Bible says, only my father, that's Jesus himself as a prophet. Aaron G. White says, those ideas are not from God. So my friend, if by Bible, if Jesus' words, you cannot contradict Jesus' words. You cannot, you will never... Uh, succeed. Let no such remarks be made. Is this uh, very hard to understand? Let no such remarks be made about time setting. Okay, how many times do you read this English? Let no such remarks be made. They do no good. Yeah, you have attendance, you have uh, many people following, getting excited. But this is prophecy, you know, you cannot, it's like kicking upon the stone, upon the big rock. They do no good, seek not to obtain a revival upon such grounds, but let due, be, let due caution be used in every word uttered, that fanatical ones will not cease anything they can get to create an excitement and the spirit of the Lord be great. Okay. We want not to move the people's passions to get up a steer, where feelings are moved. So careful about feelings. It should be reading, uh, read from the Bible and Spirit, not just you feel because like this. And principle does not control. I feel that we need to be guarded on every side because Satan is at work to do his uttermost, to insinuate his arts and devices that shall be a power to do harm. Anything that will make us stir, create an excitement on a wrong basis, is to be dreaded. It's a lie, my friends, for the reaction will surely come. You see, oh, we have to fear this prophet because we are, she is established. There will always be false and fanatical movements. I hope it will not be us made by persons in the church who claim to be led of God. Those who will run before they are sent and will give day and date for the occurrence of unfulfilled prophecy. The enemy is pleased to have them do this for their successive failures and leading <clears throat> into false lines cause confusion and unbelief. Okay. No time prophecy beyond 1844. It doesn't say no prophecy. It just says no time prophecy. So 1844 is a time or is it a year? 
I plainly stated at the st stated at Jackson Camp meeting to these fanatical parties. So Ellen White thinks that those who set time are fanatical uh, ideas. That they were doing the work of the adversary. They were in darkness. Yeah, setting date, setting time of second coming is doing the work of the adversary. They claim to have great light and the, that we are in darkness if we like this idea. They claim to have great light that probation will close in October 1884. I there started in public, stated in public that the Lord had been pleased to show me that there would be no definite time in the message given of God since 1844. Okay. I there stated in public that the Lord had been pleased to show me that there would be no definite time. Is it time? Is uh, time? Does it does she mean time, day, hour, or year? But the context of the sentence is no definite time in the message given of God since 1844. So, no time. Is 1844 a time? Our position had been one of waiting and watching, with no time proclamation to intervene. Ellen White says you cannot set year. Therefore, she means years are also time. Our position has been one of waiting and watching, with no time proclamation to intervene between the close of prophetic periods in 1844 and the time <coughs> of our Lord's coming. The people will not have another message upon definite time. After this period of time, reaching from 1842 to 1844. Okay, some people say that we don't know the time and the hour or the day, but we can know the year. Okay, let us read this sentence. No, this one doesn't need to be uh interpreted with Hebrew and Greek because Ellen G. White was native English speaker. It's not translated. It is written here, after this period of time, okay, is time reaching from 1842. Okay. Is the year a time in this sentence? Yes. She says, after, it, after this period of time, she could have said period of years if times and year are different. Reaching from 1842 to 1844. So, Ellen White thinks years are also time. Otherwise, why would she call 1842 and 1844 time? There can be no definite tracing of the prophetic time. Okay. The longest reckoning reaches to the autumn 1844. Okay. How can we understand all of those things and still believe this thing? Yeah? So we have to understand all the things and not discard some part, especially when Jesus himself uh, said it and clearly cautioned upon and one chapter in Ellen G. White writings, if you compile all these uh, related quotations. <clears throat> Ellen White expected Christ's return in her day. I was shown the company present at the conference, said the angel. Some food for worms, some, some subjects of the seven last plagues. Some will be alive and remain upon the earth to be translated at the coming of Jesus. Testimonies for the church. Because time is short, there should be, we should, so Ellen White expected the angel said, some will be remain alive when Jesus comes. <clears throat> How do we understand this statement? Another thing, because time is short, we should work with diligence and double energy. Our children may never enter college. How should we understand this thing? Just hold on. What else? It is really not wise to have children now. Time is short. The perils of the last days are upon us. And the little children will be largely swept off before it is. How can we understand this? Uh, hold on, we have explanation. In this age of the world, as the sins of earth's history are soon to close, and we are about to enter upon the time of trouble, 
<clears throat> such as never was. The fewer the marriages contracted, the better for all, both men and women. How do you understand this? Hold on. The hour will come. It is not far distant. Some of us who now believe will be alive upon the earth and shall see the prediction verified <clears throat> and hear the voice of the archangel and trump of God echo from mountain and the plain and sea to uttermost parts of the earth. Okay, how do you interpret this one? Hold on. The time of test is upon us. For the Lord Christ, the third angel, has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ, the sin pardoning redeemer. Okay. How do we understand all of this? <clears throat> Looks like Ellen White understood it, like Jesus is coming very, very, very soon. The explanation is like this. The delay is explained. The long night of gloom is trying, but the morning is deferred in mercy. <clears throat> Why? Because of mercy. Because if the master should come, so many would be found unready. Oh! Praise the Lord. God is still waiting for us. Had Adventists of the third a great disappointment in 1844 held fast their faith and followed on unitedly in the opening providence of God, receiving the message of the third angel, in the power of the Holy Spirit proclaiming it to the world. <clears throat> they would have seen the salvation of God. The Lord would have wrought mightily with their efforts. The work would have been completed and Christ would have come. Ear would have come to receive his people to their reward. It was not the will of God that the coming of Christ should be thus delayed. Forty years did unbelief. Now people who are, who are counting will count also the 40 years. <clears throat> Murmuring and rebellion shut out ancient Israel from the land of Canaan. The same sins have delayed the entrance of modern Israel into the heavenly Canaan. In either case, were the promises of God at fault. They are cooking on Sabbath because they are from slavery <clears throat> and complaining. It is the unbelief. Worldliness and consecration and strife among Lord's professed people that have kept us in this world of sin and sorrow for many years. What is the problem of ancient Israel? <clears throat> they complain about the heavenly vegetarian food. They cook on Sabbath. Worldliness. Loving the world. The entertainment of the world than God's word. <clears throat> okay. Evangelism 695, 696. Had the Church of Christ done her appointed work as the Lord ordained, the world would before this have been warned and the Lord Jesus would have come to earth in power and great glory. If we did the work and we believe God's promises are conditional. <clears throat> the angels of God in their message to men represent time as very short. Yeah, even in the Bible. <clears throat> Romans 13, 1 Corinthians 7, 29, 1 Thessalonians 5, etc. Thus it has always been presented to Ellen White. If you think Ellen White is thinking very quickly of the second coming, you just read the Bible. It is true. <clears throat> the time has continued longer than we expected in the early days of his message. Our Savior did not appear as soon as we hope, but has the word of the Lord failed? Never. It should be remembered that the promises and threatenings of God are alike conditional. When we repent, when the Israelites repent, when uh, Nineveh repents, <clears throat> God gives chance. We may have to remain here in the world because of insubordination many more years as did the children of Israel. But for Christ's sake, his people should not add sin to sin by charging God with the consequence of their own wrong course of action. So what is Christ waiting for? Christ is waiting with longing desire for the manifestation of himself in his church. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim them as his own. It is therefore our privilege of every Christian not only to look for 
but to hasten the coming of Lord Jesus Christ. We are all who profess his name, bearing fruits to his glory, how quickly the world, the whole world would be sown with the seed of the gospel. Quickly than the last great harvest. The last great harvest would be ripened and Christ would come to gather the precious grain. By giving the gospel of the world to the world, it is in our power to hasten our Lord's return. We are not only to look for but to hasten the coming of the day of God. So not only criticizing the date setters, we have actually to we can hasten the Lord's return. He has put it in our power through cooperation with him to bring this sin of misery to an end. Oh, good idea. There is so much suffering. We cut it shorter, less suffering. Yeah, A limit to God's forbearance. The unerring accuracy of the infinite one still keeps an account <clears throat> with all nations. While his mercy is tendered, with calls to repentance, this account will remain open. But when the figures reach a certain amount, which God has fixed, the ministry of His wrath commences. God keeps a record with the nations. The figures are swelling against them in the books of heaven. And when it shall have become a law <clears throat> that the transgression of the first day of the week shall be met with punishment, then the cup will be full. That is the Sunday law. God keeps a reckoning with the nations. When the time fully comes that iniquity shall have rest the state, state God boundary in his mercy, his forbearance will cease. When the accumulated figures in heaven's record shall mark the sum of transgression complete, then wrath will come. While God's mercy bears long with the transgressor, there is a limit beyond which man cannot go on in sin. Let us repent, my friends. <clears throat> when that limit is reached, then the offers of mercy are withdrawn and the ministration of judgment begins. The time is coming when, they're in, when in their fraud and insolence, men will reach a point that the Lord will not permit them to pass and they will learn that there is a limit to the forbearance of Jehovah. There is a limit beyond which judgment of Jehovah can no longer be delayed. Transgression has almost reached <clears throat> its limit. Time will last a little longer until the inhabitants of the earth have filled up the cup of iniquity and when the wrath of God, which has so long slumbered, will awake and this land of light will drink the cup of his un unmingled wrath. <clears throat> the cup of iniquity is nearly filled and the retributive justice of God is about to be descended upon the guilty. The wickedness of the inhabitants of the world has almost filled up the measure of their iniquity. This earth has almost reached the place where God will permit the destroyer to work his will upon it. Transgression has almost reached the limit. Confusion fills the world. And a great terror is soon to come upon human beings. The end is very near. And we who know the truth should be preparing for what is soon to break upon the world as an overwhelming surprise. <clears throat> We should keep the great day of God before our minds. We must educate ourselves to be thinking and dwelling upon the great sins of judgment just before us. And then as we keep the sins of great day upon before us, everything will be revealed. It will have an effect upon our character. One brother said to me, <clears throat> Sister White, do you think the Lord will come in 10 years? What difference that it makes to you whether she come in 2 or 4 or 10 years? Why? said he. I think I will do differently in some things that I do know. The Lord was coming in 10 years. What would you do? I said, why? He said, I would sell my proper and begin to search the word of God and try to warn the people and get them to prepare to his coming. And I would plead with God that I might be ready to meet him. Then I said, if you knew that the Lord was not coming for 20 years, would you live differently? He said, I think I would. How selfish the expression that he would live a different life if he knew the Lord was coming in 10 years. Why Enoch walked with God 300 years? This is a lesson for us that we shall walk with God every day. We are not safe unless we are waiting and watching. The shortness of time. May the Lord give no rest day or night to those who are now careless and indolent <clears throat> in the cause and work of God. The end is near. It is that which Jesus would have us keep ever before us. The shortness of time. <clears throat> when we shall stand with the redeemed upon the sea of glass. 
with harps of gold and crowns of glory. And before us, the unmeasured eternity, <coughs> we shall then see how short was the waiting period for probation. Wow.